you guys. Get ready with me. We're gonna be using this florist's makeup and also talking about uh, relationships uh, within the program between me and the other girls, the other girls and each other. Um, it's kind of like the drama of like the relationships that weren't allowed there and what it was like to have an enemy, which I think I actually only barely briefly touched on this, but it was not so pleasant because if you had somebody that you got along with, they would pair you with them all the time. It was always paired with this girl who just annoyed me to bits. Um, so not a big deal, not super traumatic, just kind of like day-to-day -day life there. And then also we're gonna be going over this new florist's makeup. I'm gonna show you the most amazing palette ever. I love this brand feel. So I'm just gonna give you a little sneaky peek. Ah, quick one though. Uh, you're just gonna have to wait and see. So if you wanna see how we got this makeup look, just keep watching. Hi you guys. Uh, this is a different setup than usual, and it's because the other setup takes forever. So, um, I'm shooting in this weird setup today, but I think you'll be able to see the makeup better because I have a different lens and it's super close up. And I have something really cool that I got in the mail from Florisys. We're gonna do an unboxing of this beautiful palette and uh, just do some makeup. So really easy. I'm just gonna start off with my Purlis BB Cream. This is like, oops. This is like my favorite base right now. And you'll see why. It's so good. It's like the most natural makeup ever. And it's actually my shade. You guys know about my struggle. It's like, I can't use my actual shade because I feel like it's too pale, but I desperately need to use my own color. So I've been on this product train for like a few years, but I ran out and I put my last bottle in my makeup kit. And then the other day I discovered it again. I forgot it was even in there. I hadn't been using it. And I poured some in a little bottle so that I could leave it in the kit, but I gave the big one to myself because I deserve it. And I can just buy a new one for the kit. Also, do you guys like my Chihuahua pillow? Uh, I know that's so ridiculous, but if you followed me from the very, very, very beginning, you knew that I had a little Chihuahua. And um, around the time that my videos started popping off, he became ill and he passed away in August. but. I saw that Chihuahua pillow on the dog's Dolls Kill website and it just looked like my little dog. Uh, mine was a boy and that's like a pink pillow of a girl dog, but it looks like him. So I like snuggle that pillow sometimes. It's so stupid, but I love it. Now let's do a concealer. It's the only one I have on my desk, so I'm gonna use this. I wish, this is like the perfect concealer uh, texture, but I wish that the shade was a little bit more pink. I'm gonna try another shade because this color is uh, a little more yellow and I don't really need like a yellow under my eye because it's brightening, but I, I prefer it to be like pinky to cover my dark circles because I have like a serious dark circle problem. Also, I think for today, what should we talk about? Let's talk about the relationships with the other students, actually. So even though they fought to keep us from not getting close to each other, we all inevitably did get close to each other. And after the fact, a lot of girls still to this day get together and like are super close friends. The only problem is that most of us live in different states. Like I do have some friends from there, but none of us live in the same state. So I don't really see them much. Let's do the Mario bronzer. I think this is pretty much tied with the dibs. I really like the dibs one too. So yeah, so yearly I see a few people getting together and then there's been so many so many efforts of like having a reunion. Like there's all these groups on Facebook, TC girls reunion, but it never really happens. I've never seen an actual reunion take place of like 
all the girls who went, but we are kind of all bonded to each other in a strange way. And sometimes we like discover each other on social media and reconnect that way. And a lot of girls who I went to the program with have actually showed up in the comments. So in some of the videos, uh, you'll see like comments pinned. Usually it's a girl that I went to the program with. And it's funny too, because as we got out, it seemed like everybody just tried to like get by and nobody really talked about like in in like a public group setting nobody really talked about how messed up that whole situation was which i find it interesting because i think all of us kind of felt like we were making a big deal out of nothing like i definitely felt like that for years because for us it's our reality that like our parents sent us to this place and I think a lot of us took it upon ourselves and felt like we deserved it. And a lot of the girls that I went to this place with too live in like the dirty South where it's pretty normal to be like evangelized and like made to feel like you're a really bad person or you're a sinner and whatever. So I think it's interesting because people like on YouTube and on TikTok think it's like so out of left field, but then all the girls that I went with, it's just kind of like part of their reality and it's probably like not much different from what they already experienced at home or in the church. So yeah, it's interesting. Like now, a decade later, we're all saying how fucked up it was. But like when we were younger, even like early 20s, I don't think any of us really, I don't think it registered. Like it didn't register for me that what I went through there was so abnormal until I started seeing um, this girl named Sila. She's on YouTube as well, I'll tag her. Uh, I saw her talking about her experience on TikTok and that's when I started talking about my experience. And then the first, uh, I've said this before, but the first video that I made went like got 9 million views, went crazy viral. And, and I was shocked by that because to me, that was just my reality. But to the, to normal people, they're like, are you okay? What the fuck? What was that all about? I'm trying to figure out something with this hair. I have these uh, kitsch clips, so we'll just do like just a little pin back situation until I figure it out. It's funny cause like my hair looks fine in real life, but on camera just down and plain, it looks like, sh like shit. Let's take a pause on that story time and let's just look at this. Oh my God, I got this in the mail yesterday and they didn't tell me, I didn't order this, they sent it to me. They didn't tell me and so it was just like the greatest gift in the world. And this one, we're actually going to use uh, probably only once, but we're going to use this. Look, this is Flora says, I have a code with them if you're interested. It is an affiliate and I'll put it down below. But this is like this makeup. It's just outstanding. They also gave me this powder. So look at this compact. It's like twist open, but the top stays on. And... Um, to give you a little puff and then you can open and then there's your powder. I can't wait to try this. It it feels like like a it feels like an HD powder, but I don't know for sure. I love how it locks. Like it's like a twist and open. Oh, I should do that facing you. Okay, so twist and then open. So sick. I did like a nice little video unboxing too because even like the plastic that comes wrapped around the original packaging, it's like fun to split open. So ridiculous, but it's so fun. You guys already know, I gotta line the lip. I should have done this before I started. Now let's get into this palette. I'm gonna do just like a neutral look. Today, I'm probably not gonna use that red. I'm probably just gonna leave that red alone and let the imprint stay in it forever. But I'll start with this color. These are all like really pretty soft, wearable tones. I love this. And I also feel a little bit less guilty 
using this palette than the fan palette because the fan palette was just so like just like the packaging of the fan is just so next level whereas this at least it's like plastic I feel like I can like wear this makeup out and not feel as guilty. The other one I just definitely can't use. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm probably not gonna reach for this all the time because I want to keep it in good condition, but there's definitely a lot less guilt going on doing this, doing makeup with this look than the last one. I love these colors. I love you, Florisis. <laughs> I love you. I always wanted to work with this brand. I'm telling you, this is like a dream of mine. <laughs> okay, let's use this and mix it with a little of this. I don't like too much red on my eyes, but like a little is nice. Just a little. I think I don't like red. I don't know, it makes me look like, I don't know harsh severe i feel like my face can look severe pretty easily and that's not really my goal and with that you guys know if you're on tiktok you know the bold glamour filter oh my god that filter makes me look like a man i i hate it i know that this setup isn't the best i've ever had but uh it's just easy for me These colors are pretty. Something I like about this palette and something that like, something that is talked about a lot in the makeup world is, oh, it's so pigmented. But I actually like shadows to be buildable. Like I don't want all my shadows to be super pigmented. I'm gonna go in with this one. I want it to be like, a kiss of color and then I can build on it. So I think like in the makeup world when people are like, it's so pigmented, sometimes I'm like, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. Like I find like with the really expensive brands like Tom Ford, Shivanshi, uh, just like some of like the designer names, Chanel, their shadows and their makeup is actually less pigmented but it sits on the skin in a way that's a lot more realistic and smooth and nice and this is kind of up that alley it's not the most pigmented thing the pigment is very good it's very high quality but it's not like you put it on in one swipe and i actually think that makeup like this sits a little nicer just my two cents, and maybe I'm wrong for saying that, but like, it's really, I don't believe everything needs to be so pigmented. I'm gonna put this on my lid with my finger. It's like a pretty sheen. I find it's actually like cheaper brands that claim like that they're so pigmented, like Morphe, oh my God, she's so pigmented, but like, I don't know. I'm not really a Morphe stan. I've never really, besides the, a couple of their brushes, a couple of their brushes I use, but like the palettes, there's better, there's better options for the price. Like ColourPop. I'm, I'm a ColourPop stan. I do love ColourPop. It's just better. And the colors they have are pretty. Wow, I love this eye. Shit, sorry. I forgot what we were talking about. Um, kind of like the relationships with the other girls. So let me tell you also about like making enemies in the program. So you could make an enemy in the program. And if you had one, it was just, it just made your life tough. I'm also going to go in and use that blue shade for liner. So, like, say you made an enemy and this girl has it out for you. She can pretty much, like, use any opportunity there is to tell on you. And if you get told on, you're pretty much going to get a discipline. 
Um, the staff will ask you for your side, maybe, if you're lucky. But I had one, I was enemies with this one girl named Aaliyah. I really couldn't stand her. I was more like quiet and subdued. She was loud and like outgoing. She just was like, it was like the yin to my yang, but like in a bad way. Like we were opposites and I could not stand this girl. And so she would tell on me, she would take every opportunity to tell on me. And I don't think I really told on her, but like I would just snub her. I did not like the girl, mm -mm. no, no, no. And then because I didn't like her, we would always get paired together. And staff knew that like pretty much if you beefed with somebody, they would keep you together so that like whatever, if you tried to do something wrong, the other one would tell on you. They would pit us against each other like that. So like we'd get put on together to do like activities, we'd be partners and things, and they could pretty much guarantee that nothing, nothing, no rule breaking would happen between the two of us because we weren't friends. They would actually try to separate friends. So if you had a friend, they would never put you together. Um, any of my kind of friends, the staff, it's actually funny because I loved this girl named Danielle and the staff would never let us be together because she had been in the program for a long time and she also knew my older sister. And she also like, she, she passed away, I mean she rest in peace, she had the most beautiful, beautiful smile, like everybody who know her, knew her loved her and um, she she was just like a good time. She's just kind and sweet and she like really loved people with her whole heart. And she was never really like super into like following the rules. Like she would try to get away with what she could. So because of that, they would never let me be around her because I was like a baby in the program. And she had been around for quite a long time and they didn't want her like making an impression on me. But that really bothered me because I just adored her. And um, she was one of the girls that I think she actually, she graduated, but she graduated after she turned 18. So a lot of you guys ask in the comments what happens if you turn 18. It doesn't matter if you turn 18 because in the, the legal age to leave the program in the state of Alabama is 19. So you can't take yourself out at 18. I know that sounds crazy, but literally just go on your phone right now, look it up, Google it. Uh, you can't be taken out at 19, the state of, the legal age in the state of Alabama is 18, or 19, I mean. So she did graduate, I went to her graduation, and I loved her, and um, she, she was just all around a good time, but they wouldn't really let us be together, because any kind of like, any kind of like genuine connection you made with somebody, they would try to squ squatch they would try to squash it because they didn't want us getting together and breaking the rules. They didn't want like an us versus them kind of camaraderie amongst us, but that did definitely happen just because it literally was us versus them, you know. I have been trying to do um, Aaron Parsons mascara routine with the comb and it is really awesome, but I'm not gonna do it today because I'm gonna put an eyelash on. So let's just do this mascara, just like a light wash of it. It's the Makeup Forever uh, Professional. And this is my favorite mascara. But I think take that with a grain of salt because everybody has a different relationship and goal for mascara. And I have like little nubby lashes. If I had good lashes, maybe I wouldn't love this. But I love this because it just builds them up quick. Like there's the volume side and then like the lifting side and the volume side, it just gets your lashes going quick. Like it boosts them a lot and it's just fast because I don't really like sitting here all day trying to build up mascara. Like I just want it on quick. There was also a fair amount of like lesbian, bi, whatever you want to call it, relationships going on within the program. And you guys know like I like left the program like with a girlfriend, which is funny because I never had a girlfriend before. Um, my dad was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Let's go ahead and put this in the inner corner, maybe a little of that too. And um, there was a lot of that. The staff would try to squash it 
right away. And then sometimes they would also squash it like when it wasn't actually anything. Like two girls that I knew who were close got separated because they kind of like made an assumption that they were coupled, but they they weren't coupled. They were just good friends. Also, I love this Trio Beauty eyebrow products. So that never happened to me in the program because I just kept to myself and like the people I did get close with, like it wasn't in like a, it wasn't in like, like I had like a lot of crushes. Actually, that's a lie. No, I've, I feel like I like fell in love in the program because literally you have nothing, you have nothing else to do or think about. And if you're leaning like a little bit by curious even, that's like the best time to try it out. <laughs> and it doesn't even mean like we did not get physical. Like it was super, super rare. Like it was super rare that anybody acted on anything because the stakes were just too high. But there was like a lot of like emotional relationships ongoing close close emotional relationships and like probably some of like the deepest friendships and relationships I've ever been in came out of that place just because we were like so deeply bonded because we had nothing else so like there was this one girl I'm not gonna say her name because she's changed a lot and She's changed a lot, but like I loved this girl and we lived for some time in the intern dorm together. And I didn't realize until like actually like lately looking back on it, but the relationship was like heavily codependent and a lot of stuff like that happened too. Like it wasn't always like the healthiest relationship, but there was like a deep sense of love between the girls, you know? We were in this together. Even if you were straight as an arrow, like you would still have that deep, deep love for your friends there. And sometimes it's confusing if you're a little bit left leaning, it's like a little confusing. Like, are we girlfriends? Are we best friends? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I always felt like the lines were blurred a lot. It also shaped, this is a florist's blush that I got a while ago. Um, so we'll use this too. It actually shaped, though, like, the relationships with the other girls did shape the way that I felt about, like, relationships in life in general and, like, not in a good way because when you make, when you make, like, a close relationship there and they separate you, you feel like, or if they even just, like, move you dorms or something, you feel like, you feel like there's no stability anymore. Like everything good gets taken from you. Like that was kind of my narrative. And I didn't, I didn't realize how troublesome and how bad that was that that was my narrative until like later in life. Like it was my narrative that like, don't get too close to people. Or if you do just know that there's a start and an end to this relationship. And although it is, I mean, honestly, it is true in a lot of ways. Now that I'm older, I can I have relationships that I know will always be ongoing, and that provides me a lot of relief because being constantly uprooted and separated and divided and like falling in love with people, like even just like on a friendship basis, like just truly loving someone and feeling so close and safe with them and then having that tie severed again and again, it kind of messes with your worldview. Uh, always an Ardell Wispy 705 lash. I'm obsessed with these lately. It's all I wanna wear. It's all I wanna wear. I've been wearing clusters too, but these are just A1. And we're about to use that Florist's powder too. I think my neighbor just texted me. I have issues with a neighbor. She texts me too much. It's not appropriate, but I'm scared that she'll watch this. I hate it when people find me like, like, of course I don't, like, I don't really want people in my neighborhood to like watch my social media, but there's a couple, there's one neighbor 
who's really persistent in locating me and interacting and I don't like it. Makes me feel uncomfortable because like this for me, I know it's like a big platform and it's like not, it isn't what I think it is, but in my mind, like this is a safe space for me and I don't want anybody that I've had beef with or anybody that kind of creeps me out. I don't want anybody like that around me. And this woman just continuously finds me. And she was really mean to me when I moved in. I had to file a complaint with the city <laughs> for harassment. And I'm not being a Karen. It was literally every time I came or went out of my apartment, she was accosting me. Had to kind of go to war. And then I think she realized she wasn't gonna win out and like, she, she was, if anything, she was gonna be harmed by her behavior. So then she switched into nice mode, which is good and I appreciate it and I'm, I'm glad to be at peace, but like now instead of being crossing my boundaries in a rude way, she does it in an overly nice way. Texts me, finds me on socials, DMs me, it's not something I've experienced before. I've never, I've never dealt with something like this. I almost moved. Because like my home obviously is my safe space and she was really, she would, she would like hand deliver mail and like, knock on my door, Emily, you have a package. It's like creepy, like get, get away. She would do that while we were beefing, while we were fighting. And we were fighting because she told me that I should line my whole apartment with carpet and she told me that it sounds like a band of horses living above her. And at the time, <laughs> I was like a little heavier. I had gone on a really strict, oh my God, I got burnt. Uh, I had gone on a really strict um, weight loss kick uh, when I'm, shortly after I moved into this place because COVID had just happened and I gained a ton of weight like everybody else. And, um, and I felt like she was like, calling me fat because I was overweight at the time. I, f I felt like she was like shading me like that. And now she wants to be best, best friends. Something about me, something about me that isn't a great trait is that I don't forget things. Like I'm not just like, I'll get past it for the sake of like peace and everything, but like we are not besties. Lately I've been liking to just line the lash line and not the water line. And I really want to be like Alex Earl and put white in there, but I don't have anything white right now. I only have this gold. That's cute though. I love this makeup. Let's try the Florisys powder now. I wanted a bronze first, but I can't really find a bronzer that I wanna use. So let's use a Florisys. Um, this beautiful thing, I love them. Uh, so yeah, it's like a little cushion powder. There's already a little on the puff. So I'll just start by using this. I like this puff. You guys, you have to powder with puffs. You can find them on Amazon. I've linked them in some of the videos, but the ones I link, they're, I always buy them in bulk. And I don't think you'll need that as many as I go through because I have clients and stuff. So if you're interested, just go to Amazon and, and look up powder puffs. 
you'll find like a million gajillion. You can buy five at a time or you can buy a hundred. I buy them in bulk because it's cheaper and I go through a lot of them, but it works so much better to powder with puffs. Yeah, this is great. It's kind of like a barely there powder. It's super brightening. It's like, it's like white, white. I wonder if, I wonder like if it's clear on deeper skin tones. I can try on my friends. Because it's like a Chinese line, sometimes their makeup, like, it's just a little too fair for like most medium skin tones in the States, but I'll, I'll see if I can try this on somebody else because I'm definitely interested in that. Uh, I'm sure they have another like pinky or yellow shade too. I haven't actually looked at their color range, but that worked great. Just regular, regular powder. I need some sort of contour or something. But yeah, so between like the girls in the program, we, we did get quite close. And there was also like, kind of like what happens at all schools. There was like a small amount of like clicks and bullying. And it's funny because the staff were bullies as well. Like they bullied this girl, she's on TikTok, I can link her, she's on TikTok. She doesn't talk about the program, but she does like cool makeup transformations and stuff. And she talks all the time about how even the staff members were bullying her there. There were a lot of bullies, a lot of people who feel felt small in life and were would perpetuate that within the program. My camera's getting hot, so I'm gonna take a pause. Okay, like I said, the camera got a little hot, so I looked. I love this eyeshadow, oh my god. I put a little bit more of this on the lid. I have a little bit of a hood. Um, I think as I age, I think I'm gonna have a total hood. I'm gonna be like one of those old ladies who has to get it cut out to be put back how it used to be. Uh, so I like to bring my shimmer into the crease, but if you have a good lid space, you don't have to do that. I love this. Okay, now let's do the lips. And also, oh, I forgot. Let's do a little of this as a highlight on the cheekbone first. I'm just gonna use my same eyeshadow brush. I use the same brush for everything. Like sometimes I'll do like an insane look with one or two brushes. And that is because all my brushes that are good go into my client kit and I never see them again. Any brush I really like goes into the client kit. I'm getting better about doing that because now I'm making like makeup videos, but I've always just put the best stuff in my client kit. But honestly, that kit is full and stocked and I need to just not keep doing that. And then let's take this, let's do like a Patrick Ta thing. This is a cream blush and he likes to put it like after on top of the powder to bring like a little sheen back to the skin. So let's do that as well. Um, it's a cream blush, but it's like, it's weird. It's like, I think it, it's like cream to powder it seems like. That's enough. And then I have all these millions of lipsticks ah, right in front of me. I think I want to do Glossier Leo. I bought this, put it in my makeup kit, and then I was like, I want that. I'm a Leo. My dog's name was Leo. I want this. So my clients can wear something else and I'm wearing it. I'm going to pair it with Foxy Brown. And this Glossier thing, it's like a matte like kiss of color. And can you hear the dog barking? Shh, stop barking. And yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. So like when you got separated in the program for being in like a bad relationship that they called it, uh, it was called R&R. &R. So you get put on R&R, &R, which is re relationship restriction. 
and you could no longer, even if you lived in the same dorm, you could no longer look at that person, communicate in any way, nod, smile, fist bump, like no communicating, like you had to pretend that that person was dead. And you could literally be in the same dorm with that person all day, every day. I never got put on R&R &R because I was closeted. Nobody knew about me until like, I was practically out of there. <laughs> but also I didn't fool around in the program. Like I was like so afraid. Uh, let's put a little of this nude on top of it. This is by Linda Hallberg and it's the shade Majestic Light Beige. Yeah, see like I try to do a new thing and I can't even. I'm obsessed with this gloss that I rediscovered in my Pam video. I've had this gloss thing in my drawer forever. I don't know how much I would love this. Oh shoot though. It, it takes away from trying a new color. It's not a new color at all anymore. Now this is just my usual color. Let's just try the Glossier by itself. God, I wish that dog would stop barking. My street is the loudest street ever. It is so annoying. Hmm. Do you like? Okay, I like how it is now. More than when it was before. I think the key is to put this on first and then a little lip liner. I don't know, do we like that? Be serious. I don't know if this lip is good. I gotta put the Sephora on it. Now that is nice. We're just, I'm just gonna stick to what I know and love. Take this down. I've gotta zhuzh my hair. I put a bunch of dry shampoo in it. I'm using this, I used Unite. I don't know why my hair's kinda greasy. I think I put the oil like all the way at the root or something. I just bleached uh, this again. And yeah, this is the final look. Okay guys, fixed my hair a little bit, still a little bit, bit of a mess, but thank you guys for getting ready with me. I love you. I love your comments. Try to respond every day, but I feel like I'm always, I feel like there's just never enough time to get to all of them, but I do try to read every single one. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here on this journey with me and all the products and everything will be linked below. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any ideas or any uh, topics you'd like me to cover in the next one. Okay. See you.